Hello folks, uh, so this is a separate part of the series uh, about, vlog series, yes, about games uh, that have left my collection at some point, it doesn't need to be right now, um, I constantly call, from collection, uh, call games from my collection uh, because either they do not uh, fit the taste uh, of uh, my co-players or my tastes or whatever or the opinion has changed over the course of the years or months or that whatever or i just cannot get it to the table because it's too too big or or like too many rules to to remember each time i get it out again and so on uh, there are various reasons why the games circulate uh, circulate uh through my collection and there are many of them, and there are many of those games uh, that are incredibly great. I mean, like, amazing games. I had a ton of fun with them, but at some point I just got rid of them uh, for some reason. We're going to talk about I'm going to start with uh, high-rated games, and as I uh, go through different parts uh, of the videos, I mean... There will be, this is a part one video. There will be more parts. I don't know how many I will do. Uh, but yeah, I will go through uh, quite a few games that I really love, but I just got rid of them. And um, I do have a rule of 50 games in my collection, uh, which means that if I have a total of 50 games max, then if something wants to uh, get into my collection if, if i want to uh have a game in my collection i have to get rid of something you know i have to make room for that game if it's under 50 then it's fine so this is my max amount of games that i want to own and that's because i each time when i choose something to play or learn or whatever if if I have hundreds of games in my collection, for example, and I had like around 200 games in my collection at some point, that, that was my highest point when I had this, I felt so annoyed, I felt so tired that I constantly learn and relearn and relearn each game all the times because I, if, I'm, if I do not and I did not play the games constantly, we had the reviews to do, uh, we had so many other games to talk about, previous, whatever, you know, constantly doing new stuff, playing new stuff, uh, searching for new stuff, whatever. It was just so tiring. And, and then I just had to narrow my collection down to what I feel are not, I wouldn't want to say essential, but kind of essential games in my collection. Uh, because I did my top 100 recently, you can go uh, to the channel and watch watch my top 100, and then you can see that there are many games, uh, yeah, qu quite a few games, at least 50 games that I do do not have in my collection. So, and some games that are in my collection are lower than the games that I do do not have in my collection because I did my top 100 for another reason. It was there was nostalgia as well, a part of that. How I, how I arranged those different games. So yeah, i just going to go through these games. I'm going to try to explain to you why I got rid of these games. Uh, and you can, you can comment on that. You can say that you should get these games back into my collection because one of the things as well is that uh, recently I've been going through uh, some older titles that I've played before, that I owned before, and I'm like, huh, maybe I should get this one back. Maybe not. I don't know. I have to debate. Maybe I can debate with you through the comments uh, and so on in Twitter, for example, wherever you want. So, yeah, this, this is a, an interesting topic uh, to, to uh, go through. We'll, we'll, we'll see about that. So just uh, give me a tiny moment uh, and then we'll see what happens. So, all right. So now I'm ready. And the first game I'm going to talk about is a game called Archipelago. Let me pull it out over here. So Archipelago is a wonderful game, a extremely beautiful game in my opinion. Uh, not all of the pieces are beautiful, but 
I mean, mostly is this one. Oh, this is a kind of a custom made one. But let me see if I can find the images. But um, yeah, it's it's amazingly beautiful map that you can see here and those tiles. I like uh, tile laying in certain aspects um, because uh, tile laying usually comes with a tiny bit of maybe push your luck or exploration. This one has both. So you are pushing your luck in this game, uh, grabbing those tiles, exploring, so because they must fit, the landscapes must fit with each other. And that's really cool to have. And then you want to have certain resources, uh, certain places, etc., or cut yourself out from the opponents. And uh, this is a worker placement game. Uh, there is the worker placement disc somewhere out here, which works really well. Uh, I, I don't have it here, but maybe, maybe I'll find it. But let it be. Anyway, so I want to talk about this game. So... Uh, let me maybe you can see it here. There's a circle that there are different cards and things and the build is and stuff. It's it seems to be like a sprawling game of different various things going on, but it's it's really not. It's a tight game. Uh, the biggest problem of Archipelago and why I got rid of uh, this one of the one of the things why I got rid of is the one problem is that I don't like uh, the end game condition. And I'm, talk I'm not talking about scoring points. Scoring points is fine. You get to certain objectives and you then score points. And it's cool that each of you has this kind of an endgame goal card. And then if the end game is triggered, you can score points that you div didn't even know uh, were kind of available for, to you because they were hidden by another player. So, which is a little bit also like luck-based. If I start uh, building cities... Uh, or markets, and then the game ends, and then the bonus card says, yeah, uh, you build so many markets, you get that many points, I got lucky. But on the other hand, there's a little bit of that um, hidden information and bluff, uh, because if you see someone just spamming those markets or, or doing something particularly heavily, you know, uh, then you start thinking about, ha, huh, maybe their end goal or, or like the, for what they get gain most points is that. So I should start competing with them. So why not? So that's still cool. But this end game, they can trigger, cannot. Uh, not all of them were great. And I just felt that the game could drag on unintentionally or just be too fast. So the pace of the game was a little bit... <laughs> I needed to be more predetermined, like round based or something like that, or or, or a common end game goal that we all have. Like if if uh, the archipelago gets to a certain point of like uh, twenty buildings built, whatever you know, whatever, then the game ends. That would be a much better solution, in my opinion. And the second reason I got rid of this game. Uh, the fir first reason is is not so big, so I could still deal with that, kind of. Uh, never played a long game. But the second is that I heard about another game called The Living Planet, uh, which uh, was kind of like a spiritual successor to Archipelago. It was like, huh. And I, and I, I was in Essen previewing the game, and Christopher Berlinger, the designer of uh, Archipelago and Living Planet, told me that, oh, you see, there is the, um, there's this kind of a cool game I have here, Living Planet, and does this, this, and that. And I'm like, huh, ah, that sounds, it has those vibes of Archipelago. And then I realized that maybe I should just replace Living Planet with, uh, uh, replace Archipelago with Living Planet, because Living Planet does something better, in my opinion, than Archipelago. Though, they are different games, uh, and you shouldn't compare them too much. And people who go in into Living Planet uh, thinking that, hmm, uh, I want to get Archipelago 2.0, you should not think about that. You should not try to get Archipelago 2.0 in Living Planet. Living Planet is a different beast. Just gives a tiny bit of vibes from Archipelago. That's what I realized as well when I played it for the first time. 
I was underwhelmed and then I played the second time and realized it's a different game and I started kind of a, uh, having uh, more fun uh, from that. So Living Planet replaced Archipelago for me, not in a way I wanted it to be, but still, yeah, that's why I do not own Archipelago anymore. But a great game and you should definitely, if, if I would get to play it again, why not? I would definitely play it again. So that was Archipelago. Uh, the next game is Mice and Mystics. And Mice and Mystics, let's say, Mice and Mystics is a story game, first of all. Uh, the mechanics themselves are rather easy, streamlined. Uh, though streamlined is not the case here. Hmm. How to say? I mean, Mice and Mystics is a dungeon crawling game. Uh, and it has a ton of rules and different abilities and maybe some imbalances. Uh, but the story itself, the world is just amazing. I love it. It's thematic. It's great. It's different from your usual fantasy where you have a rogue, a, a I don't know, the, the paladin and wizard or whatever. And you go and fight monsters here. You are little mice fighting cockroaches and then spiders and uh, rats and uh, cats as well so that's cool and the story is different and that's uh, why we enjoyed the game so much we enjoyed it for the story more than for the mechanics because the mechanics were sometimes extremely frustrating the dice roll was frustrating the combat was in nuisance at that time though uh, why well while well, not playing too many games it felt great but now as as i evolved in the world of board games uh, if i can say like that i feel like this game has some weaknesses and i would definitely love to see a new edition of my some mystics maybe it's a more streamlined edition with some essential components from the expansions like expanded story whatever the uh the essential edition of my some mystics that would be great i would then try it again uh, but yeah, why I got rid of this one is, uh, first of all, we house ruled a few things so we can enjoy the story and not struggle with uh, the luck-based uh, combat mechanics and other, and there are other things, uh, not losing too much and not trying to puzzle it out. Because what I do not like in story-based games or games that pretend to have story elements and adventure to then have a ton of puzzle. It just doesn't suit my play style. I, I don't like how puzzle just takes away from the overall experience of feeling adventurous. And that's where sometimes... Um, here, though, it's not, um, it's not puzzle in a game itself, but, but the... Um, but what should you do and, and the luck-based mechanics and where should you spend more time and when should you just run for it or do whatever. It's like, it felt a little bit like puzzle. So, but yeah, my and Mystics just um, design that got old, let's say. That's why it left my collection. So let's go uh, to the next one, which is uh, the winter. And the winter, I'm being one of the, at some point, one of the champions of the winter because I, I just love it in Estonia. I mean, like I, I love the winter to the to the core. I it's an amazing game, and I still it's oh it's in German. Who cares? I still think it's an amazing game. It's, I'd say it's an amazing achievement uh, of design because at that point I did watch uh, Walking Dead and I loved Walking Dead at that point. And then I'm like, okay, so Dead of Winter sounds like, and when I read the description, there was nothing uh, about the game yet uh, in 2013, was it? The end of 2013. I read about like a description about the game. I was like, oh, it sounds so great. It sounds like The Walking Dead, the game, you know? I need to have it. And I pre-ordered that without even uh, seeing any pictures and things. And then I saw the game uh, evolving in my eyes. So, you know, uh, like I saw pictures and extra stuff and 
blah 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 and the crossroad cards are amazing i love them but they are amazing when they trigger and that's the problem of the game uh sometimes they do not trigger or sometimes somebody forgets that they trigger you need to constantly be on your watch if they trigger or not or you want to like you know please go there or or you start you know kind of a negotiating or betraying that person saying that you should go there because then uh, you want that card to trigger something bad or good to have whatever and i would have loved the crossword cards to maybe trigger more often or give even more story or given even more decisible uh, divisible uh, moments and decisions and struggles and things i wanted the crossroad cards to be the center probably it was not and i still enjoyed the game immensely because zombies were just a nuisance uh you could roll this death die and die and trigger the uh, death roll of your other characters etc uh, the other small nitpick is that nitpick is that uh if somebody has too few characters because they were unlucky, uh, it's not so great for them. Uh, if, uh, on the other hand, there is another, if your opponent or teammates, let's say, that has a ton of characters, so they can roll more dice and they can do more stuff, etc. And because this game has this kind of a hidden element of hidden objectives that you need to do, and everybody seems to be a traitor, uh, which is uh, thematic, I would say yes. But throwing in a traitor mechanic into this, just uh, at first I was like, I really, really enjoyed the game. I want, I just closed my eyes on that problem. And then I realized that it is a problem for me as well because you could tank the colony as a traitor or you could tank a colony as just a person who didn't have their objective done or whatever and, and it's it's already frustrating because everybody's doing everything to to win for themselves though cooperating as well that throwing in the traitor just mixes it up too much that adds too much stress and too much difficulty to win but the cooperative variant of that was underwhelming as well so yeah if there would be a redesign a second edition of that of winter i'll definitely take a look at that but yeah this design needs to be uh, revised somewhat that's why it left my collection though if somebody proposes it uh, as as let's let's play it right now why not i would definitely play it i still do enjoy uh going and searching for the items etc so that of winter Another game that left my collection, uh, Mission Red Planet. Um, I'm also the champion of that game because I brought it everywhere. I, I just love this game. Love, 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 love this game. Or it's a loved this game. Um, so the cool part about this game is the roll cards. Uh, that's just the main thing about this game. I just love this. Uh, you each choose a card you put it face down then reveal it based on the number of that card so outsmart outguess your opponent i love that to the core but some random elements or some very take that kind of moments uh could ruin experience for some people and that's where they would like okay i don't want to play it anymore and this game could go from great to to horrible i mean for those i i loved it all um but for some it was a little bit too much the second thing is that i'm not the biggest fan of area control i i just don't like it that much i'm fine with that in some games and there is a game called empire's age of discovery where there is area control uh, and i love this game to the core so it's, it's in my collection but there is also that uh, the, the the second part of the game and the area control is fine but everything is revolving around the worker placement itself if 
where you could do a ton of stuff with, with the worker placement. Here, the area control uh, was a rather big part of the game to collect points, uh, to be the best. And I felt like choosing the roll cards, that was the fun part. And then that area control was the less fun part. So, and I played it a bunch and I realized that, I don't know, I just... Um, didn't feel like I, I I wanted to to keep it in my collection. Maybe I was I didn't play it too many times, but yeah, it just didn't fit my tastes eventually because I I evolved my taste evolved and I could play some games that I would never touch in like uh, like uh, two three years before uh, ago or or five years ago. Uh, I, I've evolve every time my taste changes every time uh, at some point i just overplayed deck builders and then i didn't want to play any deck builders and then i right now i really do want to play deck builders uh, and different card games etc so things change but yeah mission red planet is just uh, sometimes a hit or miss it depends on the group depends on the players and it would definitely though this game feels as a whole I feel like it needs more variability. It, it needs more. It needs. It needs an expansion. Something extra. Something. Something bigger, extra, or another set of ten cards. Whatever. I know it's hard to balance, but I would have liked to to have an extra element. And if if it would have maybe had that extra element, then I would probably keep it in my collection. So mission uh, red planet. Uh, then let's go to Santorini. Santorini uh, is a beautiful abstract game, uh, extremely easy to teach, to learn, uh, probably hard uh, to master. Uh, but I do really like that you have a simple goal of having one of your meeples or miniatures uh, on top of the third floor or, or on the roof, then you win the game. And then you block off each other and trying to manipulate the boards uh, in like a 3D element, a little bit of like checkers chess like elements going on here. And then you have those god powers, which are overwhelmingly powerful. They seem like they are broken. But as you start doing your own thing, you realize that your own thing is broken, the opponent thing is broken, which means it's all balanced, kind of, because yeah, it just it's kind of fun to figure out how to implement those different uh, powers and stop the opponent's uh, powers. So I like that. Uh, the main reason I got rid of this game is that it's, it's a two-player game. And as a two-player game, I don't play uh, the main two-player games. And the two-player games that I have uh, or I play as two-player games are either smaller games because it has... Uh, let's say, a, a bigger table print. It's it's not a small card game that you can play as two players on a terrace outside in some kind of a restaurant, you know, have, have a drink and then play something really fast. Uh, if you pull it out, it, it's, it's big. Uh, it fits on the table. It's not like a huge uh, sprawling dungeon calling game like Gloomhaven or whatever, you know. But it's still a little bit too big for it. It's too many pieces, so... And these are the games that I would probably play as to play games like small card games and things if I would play it with somebody. But I do not really play two players, so I think I got rid of all of the two player games. I don't think I have any. Or if I have, then it's weird. But yeah, I, there are games, that I, I do play games two player a, a, a lot, especially right now in, in the pandemic time. But they are, I would say, they are two to four player games that could also be played as two play games. So, yeah, Centurini. Uh, then we have Robinson Crusoe, and Robinson Crusoe uh, is a sprawling uh, cooperative game that I do really, really enjoy. Uh, and I would play it again. I would say if some would, somebody would. Uh, teach me the game again. I, I don't remember all the rules. And I, each time I pull it out, it just so many rules, so many exceptions, so many things going on. 
and it's just sometimes with such games it's just too much work uh, to do to enjoy them though I enjoyed it immensely but I feel like this design needs to be revised uh, I don't know if the newest edition that was on Game Found, if it's a revised edition of Robinson Crusoe, if they have changed quite a few things to make it more streamlined. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you have not played it for a long time and then you pull it out, you need to relearn the rules and different uh, nuances and, and some uh, small uh, extra rules and so on. So that was a little bit uh, too much. Plus, also, uh, it's it's huge, so you don't get it out on the table too much, and it's extremely difficult, and it becomes frustrating that you lose and lose and lose, and well, there were some players in my group that uh, weren't keen on losing all the time. Though, for example, um, uh, maybe I will, I'm going to talk about another game there was another copy of game that's extremely difficult and I also lost a ton, but it was, I don't know, more fun because maybe it was tighter, smaller, more compact, more streamlined. I don't know. Maybe that's why. So that's why I got rid of Robinson and Crusoe. Uh, then we have another huge game, which is Merchants and Marauders. And I talked about this one in our uh, recent uh, Virful cast. Uh, and I talked about... This one, uh, the, the games that need a reprint. And this game definitely needs a reprint. I, I do have issues with this game. I do love, or I'd say I love this game. It's more of a nostalgia now. I got rid of this game because this is a pirate game. This is a pirate game I want to play. This this is this is that. Corsairs, pirates, whatever. And there's NPCs and you... Uh, trade goods you go to one port buy goods and then go to the other port like pick pick up and delivery sell goods because i i, I played the crusader the uh, the pirate games on as video games and i was amazing i love that and then there is a board game that basically does that and there are some rumors and missions and things going on a little bit more abstract uh, in this game so maybe i would have loved to have even more adventure in this game but it kind of worked, and you upgrade your ship, and you buy a crew, and extra stuff stuff in your ship, and whatever, you know, it's it's just, it's cool. But I do not like games that have a um, an end game, which is like to a certain amount of something. Um, it, it depends on the game, though. But I do not like uh, Race to the Points, basically. I, I don't like racing games as a whole that much. But Race to the Points just it just doesn't, doesn't work for me. Because some players, including me, I want to explore more. I want to build up more. I like that in games. Like, I like when games grant me that. Uh, and when I know that it's 10 rounds, then I will pace it out the way that I enjoy those 10 rounds, building something up and then maybe abandoning something because I will not do it in time. In this one, it's a race to, I don't remember, like 50 gold or whatever. It's something like that. The glory points, I don't remember exactly, but it was to a certain amount of gold or points or whatever, you know. And it's a bit frustrating. Uh, the second thing is that in this game, some turns could be... A, sprawling grades amazing like you go to the port and some turns could be just i move my ship three times because i need to get from one port to the other port and that means that i did my turn boom 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 three seconds done it's your turn and then that player does all the things in the port and they do that for 15 minutes they decide on this and this and that and they have a lot of fun i do not and then that other person also does something in the port they have fun i do not it's just overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly uh, unbearable. No, it's um, it's just uh, too much imbalance in in the turn structure here, in my opinion. So, yeah, it, this game needs to be revised because this could be the one, the pirate game, the the the, the great game, but it just has some big issues. So that's why I got rid of Merchant Marauders. 
And then let's go to the next game, which is uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig. Uh, Castles of Mad King Ludwig, I, I do love uh, this game as well. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you about the games that I do love, and I would play them, definitely play them. Uh, but I don't know. <sighs> I don't know if I want, would like to play them again more than once, maybe. And with this game, I did immensely enjoy the game. And I do like building. I do like uh, building without some huge restrictions. So I could build the castle, as you can see here on the picture, that way or that way or that way, and score points. Uh, but the thing is that uh, this puzzle of putting the rooms in that way to score that points and this triggers that, this triggers that. I don't like uh, games with too much of a puzzle in nature uh, as I did before, maybe. Uh, second thing, uh, it just seemed to not fit my game group. And it just felt like nobody wants to really play it. Maybe right now they would play it, but... And I probably got tired of that as well. That that one is weird. I don't know why I got rid of this one completely. Maybe look, I maybe I got a little bit tired of of the base game, and then I uh, looked for uh, looked at the expansions as well. And I had the expansions, and the expansions were over complicated. Uh, maybe it needed something else, and also maybe I wanted to have a a. A kind of a cosmetic upgrade to the game as well so it could look better uh, something just fell off uh, that's why i got rid of castle metting Ludwig. but i don't know it's a good game i'll definitely recommend that so uh then we have uh batch history uh batch history uh to again really love this game uh, but oh, this is a weird version of the game. Uh, is this one? No, it's also a weird version of the game. Maybe that? That seems, that seems though, a uh, Korean, I think. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I don't know all the languages in the world. Uh, but this is a game where you uh, patch those different cards and tiles, etc. And you need to make really cool decisions of, of what to cover and what to leave, uh, leave on top. So you can have such and such incomes and resources, etc. And some cards are big cards like uh, wonders and uh, great people, etc. Uh, it was just a great puzzle this this puzzle worked for me i like this puzzle and a little bit of that work replacement kind of a thing going on as well and i like how you could uh, do the uh, trade routes between players and gain some extra stuff uh, but the upkeep of of those different resources was a bit, a bit of a nuance a nuance i, I wanted to nu nuisance sorry i wanted to be maybe more streamlined the bidding uh, more streamlined. Uh, just uh, the game needs to be revised a little bit. It, the game was at some point a little bit too much and at some point not enough. But it's uh, the central piece, the, the thing of this patching up your civilization, that's great. Uh, other things need to be kind of revised and uh, the components. I do appreciate games for designs, but if the components are poor, the game could just go out of my collection because I do not... Though, some of the components were great, like this this thing, the first blue token, I, I love it. Uh, but the cards, oh my god, the cards are just too thin. Maybe they made them thin because they could patch, but they were bending, so you had to find uh, rather thick sleeves, put them uh, into the sleeves, put them under the weight, uh, and then so they could be... They, they could, like, kind of... a straighten up so they would not bend and yeah it, the quality oh my god and maybe a little bit though i don't know i don't know maybe this kind of a uh, some cards have this art like great people and and wonders etc and the other things are just like plain symbol and kind of a 
texturized backgrounds, which I don't really enjoy. Um, maybe the background could, could have been done better, but I, the color coding of that background, it's, it's distinctive. It's, you can see right away that you have uh, three of that. You have uh, the military here, so you can count it up really fast, you know, but maybe just a little bit of cosmetic overhaul uh, for this game. But yeah, it's just this game needed to be streamlined, some rules to be revised. Uh, and yeah, that's why I got rid of patch history. Just didn't work for everyone. And eventually didn't work for me as well. And the last game I'm going to talk about today uh, is Burgle Brothers. And Look, I do like Burger Brothers, and as I told you, I'm not the biggest fan of puzzles, but this one, again, this puzzle really worked for me. Uh, because in this one, you have to figure out uh, where to go, what not to trigger, what to trigger, you know, but also while doing that, you discover those rooms. And I do like exploration, I do like discovering games. Uh, that's that's great about this one. So that's it balances out the fun for me. Puzzle, not so much, but adventure, kind of adventure exploring and uh, discovering things is, is up here, so it balances out. Uh, now, this one just is a tiny bit linear after you have played it a few times and you have won the game especially. Uh, each new time just feels underwhelming because if you have won this game, even though... The tiles are in different places. It's still, you go to the first floor, you do that, then you go to the second floor and basically do that same thing again and then go to the third floor and do that same thing again. So you have three kind of a mini games in a row which are the same. The special abilities are cool and how the guard works. So you, and you try to manipulate the guard with the movement of you and your teammates nice but they just probably needed there's this burger brothers too that i haven't tried but um this one just probably needed an expansion i would rather see this one burger brothers plus an expansion to that and of course a better box and the expansion would kind of uh enhance uh different floors that the first floor would be different from the second floor and some Maybe even more dangers on the first floor, etc. But maybe some greater benefits, uh, some bonuses, some other things you could do as a thief. Throw stuff you, that you could have, uh, not just one special ability, but some items that you could do. And this is your own deck of items, maybe. So this game can be enhanced in many ways. And I, when I realized that, I felt like it becomes a little bit of an underwhelming experience. Plus, uh, I, I just got tired of puzzles a little bit. And as a cooperative game, I um, didn't want to have too many cooperative games in my collection. I have some that I really want to play. So, for example, I do enjoy, I, I love the game called Nemesis. And I love it as a cooperative game. Though I can play it a semi-cooperative as well, the competitive kind of a rhyme, let's say. Uh, but I do like cooperative. And there as well, you discover different rooms, and there are a lot of randomness. Uh, it's there isn't much puzzle, but there's a ton of theme, a ton of different stuff you find, you use, boom, something happening, stories unfold. This one just lacks that eventually. So that's why I got rid of uh, Burgle Brothers. And uh, that's it for today. And so the next time, I don't know when exactly, I'm going to do a part two. We'll see how many parts there will be. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, 10 games that left my collection. So we see you in another video. Uh, thank you so much. And whoops, I'm very sorry. And bye bye. <laughs>